morning, everyone, and welcome to this service of evening prayer brought to you by Christ Church Beau Repair in Beaconsfield, but as usual on Thursday evening coming to you from the, the rectory in Verdun. Uh, this evening we'll be using a Celtic liturgy for our service. Unfortunately, this is not available in electronic version, uh, free online, so uh, I can't send that to you, so just... Uh, just listen and enter in the uh, meditative spirit of that. We will have a hymn, Be Thou My Vision, which will be posted in the comments section. mist rises from the ground to refresh our souls. The birds cease their songs, and in the darkening shadows of night we come together in prayer. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. For the joys and blessings of this day, let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. For our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought light to the world, let us worship the Lord. May we walk in his name. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness in our lives brings us grief, and our sins are heavy to bear. Hear what our Lord says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When Christ came on earth, he lived as a man who knew both hardship and despair. He knows your need. Come to him now and lay your burdens at his feet, and confess those sins of which you are ashamed. Eternal, Eternal King and Father of all, in our pride and our weakness, we have failed you, and we are truly sorry. We are ashamed that through our own fault we have brought darkness and misery into the world. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who died for us, forgive us our sins. Illumine the dark corners of our lives with your spirit of light, and kindle once more the flame of your love in our hearts. Eternal God, you have lowered the canopy of night, and its gentle shadows cover us with your peace. May the dews of heaven heal our wounds and wash the tears from our eyes. And may the burning light of Christ banish forever the darkness from our souls, that we may be at peace. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Eternal light shine in our hearts. Eternal goodness deliver us from evil. Eternal power be our support. Eternal wisdom scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy on us, that with all our heart and mind and soul and strength we may seek thy face and be brought by thy infinite mercy to thy holy presence. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I will now read this uh, canticle that's um, called The Creation of Heaven, that's uh, from this Celtic prayer book. King, you created heaven according to your delight, a place that is safe and pure, its air filled with the songs of angels. It is like a strong, mighty city which no enemy can invade, with walls as high as mountains, it is like an open meadow in which all can move freely, with people arriving from earth but never leaving. It is huge, ten times the size of earth, so that every creature ever born can find a place. It is small, no bigger than a village, where all are friends and none is a stranger. In the center is a palace, its walls made of emerald and its gates of amethyst, and on each gate is hung a golden cross. The roof is ruby, and at each pentacle stands an eagle covered in gold, its eyes of sapphire. Inside the palace it is always daylight, and the air cool, 
neither hot nor cold. And there is a perfect green lawn with a blue stream running across it. At the edge of this lawn are trees and shrubs always in blossom, white, pink, and purple, spreading a sweet fragrance everywhere. Round the lawn walks a king, not dressed in fine robes, but in a simple white tunic, smiling and embracing those he meets. And people from outside are constantly entering the palace, mingling with one, one with another and then leaving. Everyone in heaven is free to come to the palace and then to take with them its perfect, peaceful joy. And in this way, the whole of heaven is infused with the joy of the palace. Our psalm for today is Psalm 18, verses 1 through 20, or Psalm 18, part 1, if you're using the BAS. Psalm 18, part 1, we will say it uh, responsibly by half verse. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my stronghold, my crown, and my heaven. My God, my rock, in whom I put my trust. My shield, my horn of my salvation, and my refuge. You are worthy of praise. I will call upon the Lord. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. The breakers of death rolled over me. And the torrents of oblivion made me afraid. The cords of hell entangled me. And the snares of death were set for me. I called upon the Lord in my distress. And cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice from his heavenly dwelling. My cry of anguish came to his ears. The earth reeled and rocked. The roots of the mountains shook. They reeled because of his anger. Smoke rose from his nostrils and a consuming fire out of his mouth. Hot burning coals blazed forth from him. He parted the heavens and came down. With a storm cloud under his feet. He mounted on cherubim and flew. He swooped on the wings of the wind. He wrapped darkness about him. He made dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds. Burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice. He loosed his arrows and scattered them. He hurled thunderbolts and routed them. The beds of the seas were uncovered and the foundations of the world laid bare. At your battle cry, O Lord. At the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high and grasped me. He drew me out of great waters. He delivered me from my strong enemies and from those who hated me. For they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster. But the Lord was my support. He brought me out into an open place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Acts. That is Acts 10, verse 17 through 33. Acts 10, 17 through 33. Now, while Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make of the vision that he had seen, suddenly the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simon's house and were standing by the gate. They called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Look, three men are searching for you. Now get up, go down and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. So Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? They answered, 
Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you and to come to his house, and to hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. The next day he got up and went with them, and some of the believers from Joppa accompanied him. The following day they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, worshipped him. But Peter made him get up, saying, Stand up, I am only a mortal. And as he talked with him, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, You yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when, I was sent, so when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now may I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius replied, Four days ago at this very hour, at three o'clock, I was praying in my house, when suddenly a man in dazzling clothes stood before me. He said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner by the sea. Therefore I sent for you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. So now all of us are here in the presence of God to listen to all that the Lord has commanded you to say. Here ends the lesson. And now we will have... Uh, our hymn, which is Be Thou My Vision, which is common phrase 505, if you have common phrase. And the, the link is in the comments. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 36 through 53. Luke 24, 36 through 53. <coughs> <clears throat> 
While the disciples were talking about this, Jesus stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And what? And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that the repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see I am sending upon you what my Father has promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Here ends the Gospel lesson. In the name of the Holy Trinity, the source of all the Incarnate Word, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I uh, <clears throat> looked at the, uh, the lectionary for today, I thought, this reading, I've seen this very recently. And we did have this in, in the Easter season. Of course, when you're doing the, the Sunday lectionary and the daily lecture like this, uh, these things, uh, sometimes they're on a different track. Um, so this kind of takes us back to the Easter season. This is uh, uh, a gospel we would hear here early in the Easter season because it's uh, uh, Jesus' appearance, the re resurrected Christ appearance to his disciples. And um, this is one of those, we had exactly this reading, I remember um, this Easter season, where there's a, a point made um, that Jesus is not a ghost, uh, that he's not an apparition. Um, and it, the author makes a point that he has, uh, of his wounds and the fact that he is eating, that he's eating a piece of fish. And this is not the only fish eating occurrence in the uh, uh, the Gospels of the resurrected Jesus eating fish. In John, he is cooking it on the beach uh, for breakfast. Um, so what is the point of, uh, of including that? Well, you know, we know that the resurrected Christ here it seems like he's very much like he was before he died. Um, and they're kind of leaning into that that side of things, that uh, he is uh, a corporeal presence as they knew before the crucifixion. But in other places in the, in the Gospels, when G the resurrected Christ is appearing, uh, he is not like this at all. Um, you know, uh, in fact, at the beginning of this passage, he just kind of shows up. Um, he just, he's there. He doesn't come in. He just kind of shows up in the midst of them. And right just before this, there was the, uh, the, um, uh, the Emmaus Road story where Jesus is walking with some followers of his uh, all the way along the road to Emmaus for hours and hours. I don't know, longer than that, perhaps. And they don't recognize him. 
and they only recognize him when he breaks bread at the table. Then their eyes are opened. Then they realize who it is. Uh, just as he breaks bread in this Eucharistic moment. And there are other occurrences where Jesus in the, in the Gospels uh, after the, you know, after the resurrection is uh, kind of showing up and disappearing at will, appearing in the locked room. Um, and this, so this resurrected Christ doesn't seem to be uh, exactly like he was before. And that's, that's the thing. He is not. He is uh, in a glorified state. He is in a different plane of existence. And the authors are struggling to put that into words. He is definitely not a, a ghostly apparition, because a ghostly apparition is something less than uh, the person that lived. When we talk about an apparition or a ghost, uh, it's a shadow, right? It's something inferior to less than the person in their real life. It's it's a residual kind of you know, um, uh, you know, apparition. But the resurrected Christ is obviously not uh, something less than he was. In his earthly ministry but actually more he's on a higher level he's like the Jesus they knew but multiplied infinitely but they never experienced anything like this they never experienced a glorified person uh, they never experienced the resurrection from the dead directly so how do you how do you describe that and this, the whole thing about, you know, eating and, you know, touching my hands and feet. The, I think the point is not to say that uh, this was just a resuscitated uh, version of the, the pre-crucifixion Jesus. But that this resurrected Christ is completely human. And that's the whole point of the Incarnation, right? That God made flesh. God taking on our whole humanity with all that that entails. And, you know, we have the birth of, of Jesus. That's the, the, the moment of the Incarnation, God becoming flesh. That's a universal human experience, being born. Every human being is born. And then on Good Friday... He dies, the other universal human experience. But another universal human experience is eating. Everyone eats. And that's part of our, you know, between those two big gateways of birth and death, that's something we do throughout our life. And this is to say that Jesus took on our whole God in Christ took on our whole humanity, all of it, not just the spiritual nice parts, but all of our humanity, and that is all redeemed. So, even in the resurrection, it's not, because, you know, there were different, you know, uh, uh, theological ideas floating around in the early church, and some were like, that, that basically, the, the, the the human Jesus died and the spiritual part uh, rose because the human part is evil. Um, but this, I think, the, the gospel authors, by really leaning into this, uh, you know, the, the, the humanity of Jesus, even in the resurrection, is to say that it wasn't just the divine, uh, the divine Christ that was resurrected. Jesus' humanity as well, because Jesus' humanity being raised, being glorified, is our humanity raised and glorified. That's what the resurrection is. It's 
not just one person at a particular time and place, Jesus, but through him we're all raised to new life. All our humanity and all that that goes along with it. Not just the, 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 the spiritual church going part of it, part of us, but all of it, even the part that eats, you know, <laughs> and does all sort of, you know, uh, corporeal things. All of our humanity is redeemed. And this is kind of, you know, I think a, a, perhaps a message against asceticism, you know, this denial of, uh, of our earthly bodies. Uh, because even the resurrected Christ, he ate. He ate because his, he raised our humanity, all of our humanity. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This time, I invite you to um, submit your request for intercessory prayers. You uh, are in need of healing, or you have prayers of thanksgiving, or other needs, or those you know of. Uh, please type them in the comment section, and we'll pray together. God of healing and reconciliation. We continue to pray for healing in the, the indigenous communities and for reconciliation between, between uh, settler people and indigenous peoples of this country, that we may go forth to a, a, a future where uh, all exist in harmony and mutual respect. God of love and mercy. Lord, we pray for the ongoing pandemic as we give thanks for the progress that has been made, for the vaccines that are being distributed, and for the signs of hope that we can return to some form of normalcy. Lord, we pray also for caution and pray for those uh, those who are afflicted by this illness and for those countries who are still still in the throes of, of, of COVID-19. And we pray that we may have wisdom as, huma as uh, a human family going forward to work together to prevent this sort of pandemic and to live in harmony with your creation. God of love and mercy. We pray for the needs of our, our church community and those that are loved ones and family and friends. We pray for healing for those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for those who are mourning, especially Ingrid, Owen, Myreen. We pray for those who are seniors that are shut in and those who are lonely.
God of love and mercy. We pray for our leaders and for all the leaders of the nations. Especially this week, we pray for our new Governor General, Mary Simon. We give thanks for this, this step forward in naming an indigenous person to this office. I pray that this may be a first step, first of many steps taken by our government in the process of healing and reconciliation with indigenous peoples. We pray for your blessing upon her and in in her uh, in her office, and that she. We pray that she may be a unifying, healing influence. God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our uh, for children preparing for baptism, and for their families. We pray for Owen and his family, and we pray for Ophelia and her family. God of love and mercy. Hear our Gracious God, we lift up to you all these prayers that we have spoken or those that we have whispered silently in our hearts. All this we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. This prayer is called A Million Miracles. O Son of God, perform a miracle for me. Change my heart. You whose crimson blood redeems mankind, whiten my heart. It is you who makes the sun bright and the ice sparkle. You who make the who, who makes the rivers flow and the salt salmon leap. Your skilled hand makes the nut tree blossom and the corn turn golden. Your spirit composes the songs of the birds and the buzz of the bees. Your creation is a million wondrous miracles, beautiful to behold. I ask of you just one more miracle. Beautify my soul. And together we say the prayer of St. Columba. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love that never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others, May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the Son of Peace to you. God's blessing be yours, and well may it befall you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, may I be wakeful at sunrise to begin a new day for you, cheerful at sunset for having done my work for you, thankful at moonrise and under starshine for the beauty of your universe. And may I add what little may be in me, to add to your great world. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this evening for evening prayer. We will meet at the same time, uh, same uh, virtual location next week uh, with a different uh, liturgy. And I remind you that throughout the summer, uh, both evening prayer and our Sunday services in person continue throughout the summer. Uh, every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the church at uh, Christ Church Bora Bear, uh, Holy Communion in the church, and that service is broadcast uh, live on our Facebook page as well. But if you're also if you're uh, from a different parish and your church is not meeting over the summer, you're always welcome to join us in person or online. I wish you a blessed rest of the week and a good night.